hello, welcome to another episode of Jim's Open Garden. Okay, so a few weeks ago I broke the handle off my um, trowel, and um, this is a trowel that I use all the time to be honest with you, and uh, rather than go out and buy a new one, what I've done is I've upcycled some um, steel pipe and made this handle for it. So uh, this is how I did it. Okay, so this is a trowel that I've had in the garden for some time, and unfortunately I broke the, uh, the handle off it um, a few weeks ago now. Um, what I have found is with, with wooden handles on the end of these sort of um, sort, sort of small trowels. I do have a tendency of breaking them because I tend to go in into hard ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make a, um, a metal um, handle to go on there and basically I'm going to make that out of a piece of um, pipe which was uh, recycled off an old Harrison fence panel um, which is basically what the, the, the tunnels made up of out of there. So I'm going to cut off a, something like a seven inch section of that cut it in half and then turn it into like a conical shape by cutting it in half and then forming each half into like a um, sort of half conical shape and then welding them two together to make a new handle for that. So I'll just do that now and I'll show you what it looks like um, as I'm doing each step. Okay so the first um, thing to do is basically to draw a triangle. So what I've done along the natural seam on the, on the pipe here, uh, what I've done is I've found the centre point. Um, so that's where I'm going to cut basically from there to there and then from there to there. So I'm going to cut that triangle out then I'll end up with two pieces and this piece here I've got 25 uh, millimetres on, on this side and then there'll be 25 millimetres on that side which will mean that as I, as, as I roll that round it'll have a circumference of 50 which is exactly the same as this end piece on here and then at the end piece here it'll be the full width of the, um, the pipe um, so the handle will basically end up being that long. So what I'm going to do now is cut along these um, pieces here to form two pieces which I can bend round to reform like a conical shape um, pipe which I can make the handle out of. So there are the two slices cut out so what I'll do now is I can I can fo form these round and then I'm basically I'll bring these two pieces together um, so you can see I've cut uh, a slice out from the top and, and an identical slice out from the bottom so what I'll end up with is two pieces which I can weld together so these two edges will weld together and the bottom will end up to welding together which will basically end up me having a sort of cone shape but obviously what I need to do is to tap this round to make the radius um, sort of more rounded so I end up with a pipe shape or a, or a round shape at this end here and all the way along so, and then I can weld the two together so all I need to do now is cut these two pieces off and then I'll end up with two pieces I can form round to make the, the handle for the, um, the trowel. Okay, so basically I've only just cut it off. Um, um, so basically I got all of the pipe so I could hold that bit in the vise as I cut it. So now you can see that's going to be basically the handle. So what I need to do now is to sort of round off the, um, sort of make this more rounded here. And the way I'm going to do that is just by putting this bar in the, in the vise. I'm just going to put that over like that and then what I can do is by holding it in there I can tap down on this surface here and then turn it around, tap down on that surface there, tap down on that surface there. I can start to bring the two together to make the sort of the rounded handle so you can see that's basically what it's going to look like uh, from that angle. So it's going to be that big at that end, that big at that end and then I can just sort of tap that round and just form the um, you know the sort of the two edges together then I can weld these two edges together all the way up forming the uh, the conical shape so I'll just start to tap that now and I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's formed. Okay so now you can see by putting it over there like that what I've been able to do is to tap down um, the edges so as you can see I've now got again a circle at the end there obviously when them two welded together um, and then I've basically got a conical shape like that now that's going to fit over the, the Basically, I'm going to weld those two ends together, 
So I'm going to weld down that seam there and weld down that seam there. And then if you look at the, the handle like that, that's going to fit sort of down inside that little metal clip at the end like that. So it'll start to form a handle like that. And then as soon as I've got all of this ready to fit inside there, I can then start to form the, the sort of the circle part at the back here. But what I need to do before I start to form the back is I need to effectively effectively separate these two now so I've got two conical shapes and then what I need to do is weld the the blade of the the the, um, the trowel onto one of these two halves so weld it into there and then I can put the two halves together so that needs to go sort of in there and then weld that weld this part onto here to secure it onto there and then I can then add the second part on and then weld up the seams so I'll, I'll just do that now and I'll show what it looks like when I've done it Okay, so it's still a bit hot, but you can see that's the weld um, round the um, the trowel blade. So that's been welded straight into the, the bottom half of the handle. Um, and as you can see at the top there, um, it's welded nicely in there all the way around. So I know that's a really solid fix um, all the way around inside there. So what I need to do now is um, let that cool down. And then this part here will be fitted um, down inside there. And there'll be a little bit of fettling on that just to get that to sit down in there and then I can weld up the, the seams here on both sides of the handle to basically um, to form the handle and then hopefully this is a handle that won't break. Okay so that's it now welded up um, that seam and on the other side if you just release that you can see and um, I've got it welded up the side I'll clean that side up a little bit um, so that's basically the handle in place so you can see that's made of metal handle, so that's nice and sturdy, even though it's quite hot at the moment. Um, so that's nice and sturdy. So what I need to do now is to um, form the sort of half, sort of ball shaped on the end, so it's nice to hold in your hand. And then I can start to sand all of these edges down to make them nice and smooth. And then we can paint it, and then we've got a nice metal handle on the trowel. Okay, so now I've tidied up the, um, the welds. As you can see there, that's all nice and smooth. So what I've done now is I've cut in these sort of triangles on the end there, so what I can do now is fold those in to form the, the round bits at the top of the blade, so all, um, the handle sorry. So all I need to do now is sort of tap these in to form like a dome shape at the top and then weld them together. So I'll just tap them in and I'll show what that looks like in a few moments. Okay so now you can see I've tapped all of those round so they basically form a sort of dome shape on the top so it'll be nice to hold. So all I need to do now is just to go through um, each of those lines with the welder and weld it all together then I can um, sand it all down so it's nice and smooth and a solid piece of metal so I'll, I'll just do that now and show what it looks like when it's finished okay so there's the handle um, I've sanded it down a little bit but there's the handle all welded up at the end um, nice and round so when you hold on to that it's still a little bit warm whereas you, you know you can hold on to that and it's nice to hold so all I need to do now um, I've just brushed it all down so it's all nice and clean I've got the galvanizing off so all I need to do now is tape tape up around the stainless steel bit here and I can paint that with some um, cellulose paint and get that all all nicely painted up so um, so in the uh, in the bad winter and all the rest of it it won't go rusty in that so um, that's uh, how to make a handle for a trowel which will hopefully never break again so I'll paint that up and I'll show what it looks like when it's finished okay so there's the finished product I've basically um, painted that with some cellulose paint and you can see the handle there so that's nice and it's, it's actually quite well banned considering it's made out of steel, but um, hopefully that will that will not break again on me, and uh, rather than keep replacing it on wood. So that's basically how I've upcycled a, an old piece of um, pipe off a uh, Harrison fence panel. Uh, if you're not sure what a Harrison fence panel looks like, it's basically those over there. Um, so it's just a scrap piece of old pipe, which I've basically turned into a conical um, handle for my uh, for trowel, and hopefully that will last me for the rest of my life. Okay, so I'll take you a quick tour of the allotment. So this is the first greenhouse. This is the um, broccoli that we put in um, about a week or so ago now. Um, so as you can see, that's that's growing quite merrily. These are the hollyhocks, and that's a particularly white one. So a hollyhock looks like that when it's fully grown. Uh, the tall plant there. And you can just see the white flowers just starting. Um, 
So these will come into fruition next year, so you have to grow them, it's basically biannual. So they'll grow this year, then next year they'll, they'll form a plant like that with the flowers on. Um, this is the um, this is the marjoram, sorry the basil, um, that's um, grown really well now, so I need to pot that on. Um, and these are the pepper plants, again I need to pot these on into bigger pots now, but they're growing really well. Um, so that's the first greenhouse, um, as you can see out here it's quite overgrown, this buddleia. Um, is, is, is um, even though I cut it back at the beginning of the year, it's grown immensely now. It's about uh, it's got to be about 12, 13 foot high, and it's starting to push the fence out. So I need to cut this back a bit. But uh, that's the um, that's growing really well at the moment. As I say, this is the hollyhock. So that's what they look like when they're fully grown. Uh, they grow to about sort of seven foot high, and uh, you get loads of seeds off those. Um, obviously the uh, the comfrey is run to seed now, I need to chop that down and get that into the comfrey um, thing and then obviously the um, the mint and the lemon balm, the, the marjoram here and also the, uh, this is sage, that's all growing really well. And then down there we've got the rosemary bush which I um, planted this year so that's growing really well but obviously it's been taken over a bit by the by the other um, herbs around it. Um, it's the second greenhouse as you can see these are the tomatoes and there's a clip on this which will probably be in this video of um, me sort of clearing out all the bottom and uh, chopping the tops off and stuff and getting that all sorted out. And the grapevine, as you can see, is growing quite merrily. Got some quite nice bunches of grapes. Um, I did have a question on the channel about uh, how do I store the grapes. Basically, we don't. We just eat them. Um, we can, in our family, we can quite easily eat all of the grapes off this within a few weeks. So uh, none of it goes to waste. But uh, uh, it has grown quite a lot on the outside of the greenhouse. Um, I don't know if you can see. Um, so I need to cut all that back. Um, I, I need to get out again. Um, but uh, this is the only problem with um, grapevines. When they get to sort of four or five years old, they tend to sort of, you, you know, you're constantly cutting them back. Um, and then obviously it's putting pressure on the glass as well. So I need to um, chop all those off and sort of pull the pull the bits in. Um, this area here, this is this is going to be become the strawberry patch, which I'll come on to in a moment. But um, this is all going to be cleared out. Those two at the back end be straightened. I'm going to put a metal um, sort of frame all the way around it with um, some mesh over the top to stop the birds eating the strawberries. Uh, but uh, that's some spinach which is going to go in the ground in the next few days and there's some beetroot there as well which I know is late but that's going to go in, in the next few days. And this is some asparagus we grew uh, which will be put in here as soon as this bit's done. Okay just give you a quick look in the third greenhouse. Um, this is where I've got the, um, this is the basil um, the first lot of basil, as you can see, it's growing really well now. So that's basically ready to start um, cutting up for um, food and that. And we've got the first lot of cucumbers just about ready now. So there's there's one here. Um, I think this one at the this side here is going to be big enough to eat before much longer as well. And we've got a whole bunch of them down here. I don't know if you can see at the back there. There's, there's four at the back there. Um, so the the uh, cucumbers are doing really well. What they're not doing um, is is growing very far up the uh, the bars. This by this time, normally they've 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 grown quite big, but uh, they seem to have plenty of cucumbers on. But the plants themselves seem to be quite small. But um, that's what the the basil and the beetroot uh, and the cucumbers look like at the moment. Okay, and moving on, um, the asparagus as you can see is doing really well. Um, the um, the raspberries are also doing well. Unfortunately, I've got loads of this bindweed um, amongst them, which I keep pulling out by the arms full. But uh, the, bind, the, the weeds this year have been absolutely incredible, so I'm constantly pulling. Believe it or not, two weeks ago I pulled all the bindweed out of this part, and um, it's grown back this much in the last few um, couple of weeks. Again, the strawberries are absolutely snarled with um, bindweed, so all of these strawberries are going to be taken out of here uh, and moved either to there or the other side of the greenhouse. Um, and then this bit here is going to be all dug over, got all the bindweed out and um, I'm going to be digging potatoes, um, sort of growing potatoes there next year just to try and clear the ground again. Um, this is the first potato patch, as you can see they're all starting to die back a bit now. So I'm going to start digging these potatoes up. How big they've got I don't know. Um, I'm not expecting the potatoes to be massive this year because of the, the weather that we've had. It's been quite hot and it's also been... Um, sort of quite dry so I don't think potatoes are going to have formed quite as nicely as I would have liked them to have done but um, I'll show you what they look like in the next few weeks when I'm digging them up. Um, this is the bit where the, the first tunnel so we've got the um, sweet peas um, grown up 
um, the side of this. I'm, I'm picking these on a sort of weekly basis. I'm sort of taking all the sweet peas off and taking them down to the house. Uh, right in here, this is the old broccoli here. So that's basically, that, that's being given to the chickens at the moment. Um, so I'm, I'm just giving them a few plants every other day or so. Um, this is the new um, broccoli here. Um, so that was planted um, about three weeks ago and this was planted about two weeks ago as you can see there's a difference. It's the same batch but these were these were planted slightly later so they've not quite um, developed quite as much as these these others here. But so I'm hoping that I'll be able to crop off these in the next sort of three weeks. Uh, and on this side here, this is the monster kale. As you can see it's grown really well. Um, so the kale's um, I've not actually picked any of the kale yet, but it's about up to about four foot high now, um, and I'm going to start picking the picking the leaves off and try and um, start to eat this on a Sunday now. So that's the, what the kale looks like in the first tunnel. But as I say, the biggest challenge this year, apart from watering, and um, and that has been uh, actually keeping up with the weeds because the weeds have been absolutely horrific this year. Uh, I've not known weeds like it. Um, in all the years I've been here, I mean, um, the, you know, these guys next to me here, you can see how the weeds have taken over and all that one there and here. Um, and this was in a similar scenario a few days ago. Um, I managed to finish the weeding here. So these are the second lot of potatoes. As you can see, there's still some weed in there, even though these have been weeded. Um, there's still some weed in there. Then we've got the, on the two lots of onions. Then we've got the parsnips and then the spinach there. Uh, all of all have now been weeded out. Uh, but I, I do need to go back and do a finer uh, run on that just to get the last few weeds out. But these potatoes again need to be weeded. Um, there's you know there's chickweed and there's this what we call muckweed which comes in with the muck. Um, that that's basically everywhere this year. Uh, sunflowers, as you can see, um, these have cross pollinated with the multi-headed ones. So these these should be the giant ones. But unfortunately, they cross pollinated with the um, multi-head ones and I've basically got a hybrid between the two so next year I'm going to be growing the sunflowers directly from a seed packet so I'm, I know I'm going to get giant sunflowers but uh, that's what the sunflowers look like and of course we've got the two onions the onions aren't doing too badly I've had quite a few run to seed because of the dry weather uh, and the heat and that but um, the ones from seed are most certainly doing better than the ones from um, from the um, you know the onion sets these are, these are from seed uh, and those are from seed there. Those those ones that you see aren't doing too well there. They're from um, onion sets. These are the parsnips, as you can see. They're quite a variety of sizes. Um, they go from quite small ones like this one here, um, and these here to sort of some that are sort of more like nine inches high. But uh, those are all weeded out, as I say. Um, and uh, where I've got sort of patches where there aren't any parsnips, what I intend to do is put the the beetroot in between them so I can grow the beetroot and the, the parsnips together. Um, this is the, the spinach, again I'm going to put some more rows of spinach in next to them here so all of this will be spinach. Um, and a, a bit of this is run to seed as well, you can see a few there that have run to seed. I've pulled out the majority that have run to seed but uh, again this is because of the heat because uh, we've had such hot weather this year um, and we keep having these sort of downpours of rain and then sort of prolonged periods, two, three weeks of really hot weather. The weeds have loved it, but unfortunately the, uh, the vegetables have suffered a little bit. But um, that's what the spinach looks like. Okay, and the second tunnel here, this is where we've got the gourds. And again, this is weeded, I mean, you can see the weeds here. This is weeded um, about a week ago. And uh, that's grown in the last week, basically. But uh, we've got um, two courgette plants here. You can see the first courgettes or zucchini starting to form um, and then we've got um, butternut squashes on this side here. sorry that's another courgette plant there these are butternut squash plants and then the rest of them are pumpkins so all of these four here are pumpkins and I'm, I'm hoping they'll grow this way what I'm doing to keep these as moist as I possibly can is obviously I'm watering them every night but I'm also putting um, all the um, grass cuttings on top of them as well and sort of round them just to keep the moisture in the ground that will obviously keep the weeds down as well so I'm mulching them with as much grass as I can basically cut off our lawns at the moment but that's what the second tunnel's got in at the moment one job I do need to do is get up and sow this um, you can see at the top here how this has come apart I need to um, get in there with some uh, nylon cord and sew it up but uh, that's one job that's been on the list for a few months now 
Okay, uh, and then we've got the rhubarb, as you know. Uh, the rhubarb is, uh, I've picked everything that I'm going to pick this year. So this is now just putting all the energy back into the uh, the roots. Then we've got the the last three rows of potatoes here, as you can see the weed. These were weeded out about three weeks ago, and you can see the weed has grown back again. Um, I have started to weed them again yesterday, but uh, I do need to get up here again and uh, get all, pull all these weeds out, particularly this chickweed at the bottom here. It just goes over everything. Uh, and then we've got the, the string beans around the front here, which are just about getting to the top now. Uh, again, like with the other beans, what we need to be doing this time of year is just taking out the um, just taking out these top bits here, and then that'll encourage the the plant to bush out at the bottom. So just pull off basically the top runner there, and then what that'll do is it'll encourage the the, uh, the plants to um, sort of bush out, put more shoots out from the bottom, then you get more beans, um, and it stops the um, the bean frame getting too sort of top heavy. So you just need to pull off the um, pull off the top bits like this. Uh, just, just put your finger through them, basically, and that'll um, then then that plant will then start to grow more from the bottom. Uh, the clenches have been nice this year, as you can see, they've uh, grown pretty much all around here. Um, there's plenty of weed in them, unfortunately, but uh, that's what it is. But you can see the weed here as well. Uh, everybody's suffered with it this year. Um, the weeds have just been absolutely horrific. Um, I've, I've never known a year be so weedy as uh, this year. Um, so that's the other side of the potatoes, um, that's the um, coloco growing nicely there. Um, obviously all this has been weeded, this was sort of up here a few days ago, so I've weeded all of this as well, got all the weeds out, and uh, I just need to go over now and just hoe it over and get all these smaller weeds out, um, or dig it over with a rotomate or whatever. Um, so that's the other side of the onions, as you can see, some of the onions are doing really well. Uh, this is a really nice sized onion there, um, but these they're, they're from seed. Um, these ones here are from um, the, um, the sets. As you can see, these aren't doing anywhere near as well. They've all sort of flopped over. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to get any red onions out of these this year, but uh, we'll just have to see. Right, and then onto the, um, onto the runner beans, as you can see, I keep putting these in. Um, again, we're taking the tops out uh, of these. Just sort of pulling your finger through like that, just to... Um, encourage them to bush out at the bottom um, and I'm, I'm doing this on a daily basis at the moment just sort, just sort of taking the top out to try and get them to bush out at the bottom but uh, as you can see there's loads of flowers on we've had plenty of bees around them and that pollinating as you can see a bee here there just, just going around and uh, there are the odd um, beans just starting to form now so uh, you can see here there's a little bean starting to form there um, so the beans shouldn't be too bad this year um, I always typically do well with the beans, but uh, I think this year we're going to do particularly well. Uh, but you, you know, for the number that I've got, I think we're going to get quite a lot of beans out of there. And that's the other side of the uh, the first lot of potatoes. Now here's typically where the potatoes grow the best, because this, this ground here is a little bit moister than the rest. Um, and I always put all the muck and um, sort of stuff on here over the winter, so then when I spread it out, a lot of the goodness has already gone into this. So this is probably the most fertile part of the allotment. But as I say, the um, these strawberries here have to come out and I need to dig all this over and get all this bindweed out because it's uh, it's just been a real pain this year. I've been pulling and pulling at it and trying to get it out but unless you get the roots out it'll just keep coming back. Um, okay, the apple tree as you can see um, is full of apples. As soon as the um, apples have come off what I will do is trim this down, um, this espalier tree because it is, um, I have already trimmed some bits off it this year. But um, obviously these, these apples, as soon as they've come off, I'll be trimming off all these little side shoots and branches. Um, the jostabries, unfortunately the birds ate most of the jostabries this year. Um, I tested them and they were slightly hard. I came up two days later to pick them and basically the birds had eaten them all. So uh, that was a bit of a disaster to be honest with you, but still, um, <clears throat> there's always next year. So the, the, the jostabry bush, I need to cut this back as well now, because obviously I'm, I'm growing this in like an espalier way. So I'm going to be cutting this back in the next few weeks. Um, but what I don't want to do is cut so much off that I sort of take all the, um, the leaves off it because I could damage the plant if I'm not careful. So what I might do <coughs> is leave this until the apple tree is um, finished with the apples and then just go along here and sort of chop them all back. But um, that's what the uh, fruit trees look like. And as you can see, the raspberries are throwing up all these new shoots now. So they're 
um, doing really well. Um, the, they're all within the the, uh, the poles at the bottom. You know, I, I made these uh, uh, clips a few weeks ago. Uh, what I might do is make another set to go at the top to pull them in at the top as well. So I'll have a one at the top as well just to bring them in. Um, so that's possibly something I can do over the winter. But I think I'll make another set of those those hooks because they've been quite successful. And then I can pull them in at the top as well just to tidy it up so I can get up and down here um, with a bit more ease. Um, and then these are all the these are all the roots that I've taken. Uh, sorry, all the the weeds that I've pulled out in the last two weeks. You can see there's a, there's an entire bulk bag full of weeds there, um, and this has been sort of rotting down. So this was this was kind of piled high. It's actually gone down a few feet over the last few weeks. But you can see um, that's absolutely packed full of weeds, and there's still loads of weeds on the allotment. So as I say, the weeds have been absolutely horrific this year. Um, this is the um, celery growing along there. So that's not doing too badly now, um, but uh, I don't know how good it's going to be because they should be a lot bigger than they are there um, by now, but um, I don't know, we'll have to see. So that's the um, allotment, and we're on the 21st of July at the moment. So, I hope this episode was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Up the Garden.